There are things that are out of our hands. And that's why so many things in Scripture would give us assurance that when things are out of hands, out of our hands, God is there. God is sovereign. It is in His hands. And uh, I really was trying to review the preaching and uh, parang napapapray na lang ako kay Lord. No? I think we're at that situation now where Green Hills is in the uh, hot spot, right, of what happened. And, and I felt like the Lord was saying, sa dami nang nangyari sa Pilipinas, right? even when I was young, whether it's the uh, political upheaval, coup d'etat, SARS, ano pa ba, uh, namatay si Kobe, ano, lahat ng problema na nangyari sa Pilipinas. Right? There's one thing that still remains. First of all, we're still alive, tama ba? Pwede pa tayo, right? Marami po tayong nalampasan ng problema. Right? Hindi po tumatagal lahat ng problema. Right? May bukas pang ibang hope. There's hope for tomorrow. And, and if we look at Scripture, even though problems have come and gone and, and there are major things that happen worldwide, an earthquake, a volcano erupting, the Word of God still stands. The church still stands. The church still grows. There's power in what we do. And I think sa mga ganitong sitwasyon, it's in moments like this where the songs that we sing and the doctrines that we believe and the gospel we proclaim is truly tested. Yung kinanta natin, you are my peace, you anchor my heart. Totoo ba yun? Is that true? When Paul wrote Romans and will go through the whole book of Romans for I don't know how many months, when he starts writing, you would feel the heart of Paul. He truly believed, not just what he was preaching or seeing, he truly believed in this Jesus and what this Jesus can do. Sobrang bilis po mag-explain ng, ah, ang gospel, ganito yan, sinner tayo, tapos ganito, tapos ganyan, dumating si Lord. Mabilis po mag-intellectually explain ng mga doktrina ang mahirap yung we live it out. And for the next few weeks, months, we'll look at the gospel of, the gospel explained, the book of Romans, and how does this affect my life? More than just knowing what this is all about, how does this affect me? How does this affect me now as a pastor of Green Hills, going through a difficult situation in our city? How does this affect me as somebody who might have a problem, whether it's a financial problem, a marriage problem, in my everyday? How does the gospel take its effect over my life? We'll look at Romans 1, verse 1 to 17 today, but I want to jump off first to verse 16 to 17, where it highlights the first part of the letter, dahil merong gustong sabihin si Paul. And I want to start there, then we move again to verse 1. So if you have your Bibles with you, turn it to Romans chapter 1, and we'll look at verse 16 and 17. He says there, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation. This is the power that saves us to everyone who believes, both to the Jews first and also to the Greeks. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the righteous man shall live by faith. Alam nyo, napakalakas nitong verse. In fact, ito po yung verse ni Paul that changed a man who changed history. His name was Martin Luther. Right? Si Martin Luther, sobrang bait. Sa sobrang bait niya, araw-araw nangungumpisal. More than siguro 10 times. Pag feeling niya may kasalanan siya, pupunta siya kay, ano, kay father o kay brother. At magko-confess siya. And while reading through the scripture, he came upon this verse that changed history. That changed church as how we know it. Martin Luther actually said, Night and day, I pondered until I saw the connection between the justice of God. Kasi takot siya kay Lord eh. Lord, pag may ginawa ako, masusunog ako. Right? Sa English niya sinabi yun. Ha? 
He pondered the justice of God in the statement that the just shall live by faith. How can I live by faith if I know I'm a sinner? He kept thinking and he kept asking the question. Then I grasped that the justice of God is the righteousness by which through grace and sheer mercy. Yan po yung meron tayo araw-araw. Your mercies are new every morning. God justifies us through faith. Pinabago tayo ni Lord at sinasabi niya, I'm well pleased with you through faith. Thereupon, I felt myself to be reborn and to have gone through open doors into paradise. Sa Tagalog, gets ko na. Sa Tagal ko na sa simbahan, sa araw-aral kong pangungumbisal, na gets ko na rin. And he was talking about Romans 1.17. For the righteous man shall live by faith that I cannot do this on my own. Now, in this statement that Paul made, sabi niya, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Hindi ko kakaya si Lord. Sasabihin ko talaga si Lord ang nagbago sa akin. Sasabihin ko talaga, grace lang talaga to ni Lord. Kahit na ayaw mong mag-faith-faith ako, wala akong magagawa. Christ, change me. I am who I am today. Not because of a book I've read, but by the grace of God. Some people kasi ganun feeling nila, no? Pagka, ano bang secret, no? Anong secret? Wala akong secret. Hindi ko to kaya pag wala si Lord. Paano ba maging leader? Sa totoo lang, grace lang talaga ni Lord. Anong gagawin niyo sa greenness? Ay, malay ko din. What I'm saying is, it's by the grace of God. And but a human being who is so adamant about my faith in God, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God that saves. Now, ang magandang tanong, what made Paul and the church believe in the gospel so passionately? For you and I to say to our friends, pag may nagtanong, Ano bang meron? Yung walang ano, hindi, hindi walang hiya eh, ano? Hindi ka nahihiya. Okay? Parang lola ko lang, no? Nung kumakain kami. Oh, kain kayo. Wala hiya, ah. Walang hiya. Alright. Okay. Okay. So, hindi na intindihan ng mga Pinoy friends ko, no? Alright. Hindi sabi niya, wag kayo mahiya. Hindi kayo walang hiya. Okay. How could we come to a point in our life where I can actually say, this is all God. I'm passionate to say, this is God, this is not me. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hindi ko kakaya faith ko. I will speak of my love for this Jesus, and I will speak of His love for me to the world. I will not sugarcoat. I will truly say who I am now is because of Him. How can we come to that point, and how? Was Paul able to do this? To be able to write and encourage the people, do not be ashamed of Jesus. Right? Akala natin, no, maraming tao, feeling kasi natin, pag sinabi natin, Jesus, Jesus na, ang re-reaction, ayan na naman, si Jesus, Jesus na naman. Alam niyo ba, maraming kaibigan niyo, nag-aantay lang na may magsabi sa kanila kung anong meron. I remember, I was tasked to interview an atheist. Part of our assignment. Pero yung assignment namin, sabi, mag-interview ka ng atheist at bawal ka, bawal mo i-defend yung faith mo. Makinig ka lang. Sa ko, ang hirap nito. Right? Kasi intellectual ako eh. Lelo ko lang. Okay. Right. Porma lang yon, Pormang intellectual. Right? So sabi ko, oh, oh, sure, sure. Alam mo, sobrang life-changing yung interview ko. I interviewed four atheists. Those interviews were so life-changing that at the end, all I can say is, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. One atheist said, Alam mo, hindi ko talaga malunok na si God 
ang gumawa ng mundo. That there is a creator. I cannot. Pero, sabi niya, pero, halos lahat mo ng kaibigan ko born again. Ang gaganda ng marriage, ang ganda ng pamilya. Tapos sabi niya sa akin, parang nangungumpisan. Pero ako, single pa rin ako. Ang gulo-gulo ng buhay ko. Eh, bawal daw ako magsalita, di ba? Tanggapin mo ang Panginoon sa buhay. Diba? Gusto mo na sabi. Tanggapin mo na si Lord. Kailangan mo si Lord. Di ba? Sabi niya, hindi ko talaga maano. Parang alam ko. Pag naging Christian ako, gaganda buhay ko. Sabi ko, oh, so bakit? Sabi niya, hindi ko kasi matanggap na siya gumawa ng solar system. Yun talaga yung problema niya. What was the point? He saw the effect of the gospel, but he cannot humble himself and come to a point of saying, there is a God, and I'm not ashamed of this God. What made Paul? Here's what made Paul so passionate about his faith. Kung lahat tayo tulad lang ni Paul, at hapang atao, I'm telling you, we'll transform our nation, especially at moments like this. You know why? Introduction pa lang ni Paul, verse 1. You know, introductions are very important. He says, Paul, a bond servant of Christ Jesus, called as an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scripture, concerning his son, who was born of a descendant of David, according to the flesh. First thing I want all of us to know. Naubusan lang ako ng English siguro kasi stressful kahapon. Here's my first point. Paul's identity in Christ was solid. Wala na akong maisip. Solid na lang yung naisip ko. Wala nang oras mag-isip kahapon. The identity of Paul was like, grabe, ang solid alam niya. He knew who he was in Christ. He says, I'm a bond servant set apart for the gospel. Ibig po sabihin ng bond servant, dulos. Somebody who no longer has any right of his own. I'm dead to myself. I am a bond servant of Christ. What God wants, I will do. What kind of gospel have you received? A kind of gospel na jini-jini mo si Lord. Or a kind of gospel that says, I'm surrendered to my Christ. Paul says, I'm a bond servant. Postura pa lang niya sa relationship niya kay Lord. Grabe na. Bond servant of Christ. Yung iba sa atin, pag pumustura, BIP ni Lord. Lord, I want it now! May tono ka pa. Para mas effective. But Paul, it was different. Lord, not my will. If I get in prison when I'm in chains, I'm okay. Yung sinabi ni Bishop kanina, mga sinulat niya yon habang nakakulong. A bond servant of Christ. Set apart. Bata pa lang. I've been set apart. All of who I am now is for a purpose. It is set up, I am, I am set apart for the gospel in Galatians 1.15. But when he, Paul writing, Jesus, God, who has set me apart before I was born and who called me by his grace. In short, Paul was saying, di po aksidente na Roman citizen ako. Di aksidente na alam ko ang Greek culture. At kilala ko ang mga artista sa Greece. Hindi rin aksidente that I am under Jewish training. All of my exposure led me to this. I can face the poorest of the poor and not be ashamed of the gospel. I can go and approach a Roman soldier and preach the gospel. I can go to the kings and present to them the story of Jesus. It is not an accident. This is who I am. Tingnan po yung, tingnan mo yung katabi mo. Mukha bang aksidente yan? Right? In short, who we are as Christians 
as followers of Jesus, hindi po aksidente. Ikaw ka dahil pinano ni Lord yan. Pinano ni Lord Filipino Chinese ako. Hindi ko pinili yon. Na naka-red kami pag birthday. Pansit ang laging ulam. Pinaaral sa Lasal, hindi ko pinili yon. I wanted Harvard. Hindi ko pinili yon. Lumaki ako doon. All this to set us apart for a purpose. Paul you solid. All that I am, all that I would do for God will be based on my identity in Christ. And I acknowledge that whatever exposure that I've been given, it is for this very purpose. Hindi po aksidente, Pilipino tayo. Hindi po aksidente, magka-church mate tayo. Na nasa victory ka, wala ka sa ibang simbahan. There's a reason for everything. You're set apart. You have to understand. You are in your job now for something, for a reason. Set apart. Who has declared the Son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead, according to the Spirit of holiness, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith. Ano sabi ni Paul sa sulat niya? Sabi niya, not only do I know he not only does he know his identity in Christ, he says, This is all based upon my identity, is based upon the resurrection of the dead. This Christ who died and was resurrected, that is my platform. Diyan po ako nakatayo ngayon at sinasabi ko sa inyo kung sino ako. I am not ashamed of the gospel because what? This God that I worship died for me. No other God died for us. Not only did He die, He resurrected from the grave. Kaya ganun na lang yung conviction niya. Lakas. Kaya malakas dating ni Paul eh. Naniniwala siya dito. Hindi siya wishy-washy. Hindi siya dahil mas maganda yung debate nung cult leader, doon ka na. No. He knew his scripture. He knew his God. Among whom you are also called of Jesus Christ. To all who are beloved in God and Rome, call the saints. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This was just his introduction. Seven verses. Ganong kahaba. Because he was about to say something truly important in this book. He said, I might as well give a long introduction of who I am. Because I stand on this. I'm a bond servant, set apart. Why? Because of the resurrection of the dead. Right? Ano po ibig sabihin yan? Bakit big deal sa isang Kristiyano ang resurrection? Right? You see, the resurrection of the dead are two events. The death of Christ and the resurrection of Christ. Death, resurrection. Hindi ka mare-resurrect pag di ka namatay. Alright? Tulog ka lang nun. Alright? The resurrection of the dead means, number one, the love of Christ displayed at the cross. His death speaks about His love. Paul was saying, hindi ako naiya, bakit? May nagmahal sa akin. He crash landed for me. Captain Reed? Dala ko si Captain Reed. Okay. In short, grabe yung pag-ibig ni Lord. God loves me so much. Ano ba ito? Nakakulong lang ako. Nothing compared to His love. He died for me. I'm in prison. What's to complain about? Ilan po sa atin, mareklamong kristyano, init ang aircon ngayon, hindi ako maka-worship. Dalawa lang yung singer kanina, dapat lima. Pangit ng preaching ngayon, lipat na ako doon sa kabilang church. 
Our complaints are so trivial. Like we're consumers. But if you have been loved, pagalam mong minahal ka. Ano pang hindi mo? What do you ask? What can I ask of God? Every day I breathe. It's a miracle. God loves me. My mom died of lung cancer. When she was about to die, there was a realization. Every breath is a miracle from God. What else can I ask for? Love. Agape. The love of Christ displayed at the cross made Paul says, I'm not ashamed of this gospel. Ngayong may krisis sa bayan natin. The church should be the one who will arise and display this kind of love. Tayo dapat yung nag-spread ng love, hindi ng fear. Tayo yung mas sensitive sa mga nangangailangan at kailangan ng tulong. Tayo yun. Tayo yung una nagbibigay ng pera. Tayo yung nandoon. Kung kailangan. The love of Christ displayed at the cross. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friend. This is the love of Christ. Now, that's the cross. Marami pong Kristiyano nakatingin lang sa cross. Tama ba? Halos lahat ng kanta tungkol sa cross. May nakalimutan po tayo. Wala pong ibig sabihin ng cross pag walang empty tomb. In fact, the very central message of Christianity is the resurrection of Christ. Why? Because resurrection brings hope. The hope we have because somebody died but overcame death, now a Christian can say, kung si Jesus namatay at nabuhay, pwede na akong umasa. May pag-asa. There's hope. Right? So, dapat tayo yung least na nagpapanik. Why? There's hope. Hindi nagpapakamorbid, ha? Kahit magka-virus ka, pag namatay ka, which lahat tayo mamamatay, asan ba tayo after? Saan? Sa sementeryo. Hindi. Sa langit. We're in heaven. Everybody dies. Real talk lang po. But the hope we have in Christ, I can hope. I can pray. Iba po ang postura ng Kristiyano kahit na naghihirap. Bakit? May hope. May resurrection eh. There's always hope. The resurrection is the reason for our hope. I can hope because Christ died and He resurrected. Sabi ni Paul, 1 Corinthians, I delivered to you as of first importance, pinaka-importante. Okay? Lahat importante, ito pinaka-importante, sabi niya. What? That Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. He was buried. And that He was raised on the third day, according to the Scriptures. And that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Ano sabi ni Paul? Importante po ito. Bawat Kristiyano kailangan malaman na matay si Lord at nabuhay on the third day. Love, hope, the message of the gospel. Jesus died for us. Why? Because he loved us so much. And he resurrected. Therefore, we can hope. Nakita niyo yung buhay natin? Ano bang pinapagawa sa atin ni Lord? Magmahal ng kapwa. Magbigay ng pag-asa. Kristiyano, salt and light of the world. Why? Because the central figures of our faith is what? The cross and the resurrection. The love and the hope that we have in Christ. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. Then those also have fallen asleep, those who died in Christ have perished. 
If we have hope in Christ in this life only, we are of all men to be pitied. Kung walang resurrection, kawawa naman tayo. Naloko tayo. But then in verse 25, for Christ must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is what? Death. People fear death. Ako tayo mamatay. Sa Chinese, hindi pinag-uusapan yan. Okay. Bakit? Malas yan. Don't even say it. Kaya August, may ano kami, di ba? Ang pang-negosyo, malas yan. Right. Sir Gosman, we don't want to talk about it. Yet, for the Christian, it actually brings hope in us. Why? The God that we sing to the God that I worship, the God who inspired Scripture is the same God who overcame death. My hope. The resurrection showed us how Jesus overcame sin and death. Now, how does this apply to real life, to our life now? Now, if this is true, as what Paul was arguing, dahil totoo to, dahil kung dito totoo, kawawa tayong lahat. Naloko tayo. Ngunit dahil totoo to. Ano sabi niya? What was his point? His point was, what else can Jesus not overcome? The last enemy, the last level master to defeat was death. Jesus defeated death. Resurrected after three days. Nobody has ever resurrected and not and, and live forever. Only Jesus. O oh, death, where's your sting? O oh, death, where's your victory? Sabi sa 1 Corinthians. Talo ka na, kamatayan. Right? What else could Jesus not overcome? Lahat po ng problema natin, He can overcome. So tingin nyo, nung dumating yung COVID-19, sabi ni Lord, Uy, hindi ko alam yan ha. Do you think God is panicking in heaven now? He knows. But Jesus overcame sin. Jesus overcame death. The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. One of my favorite stories this year, hindi ko alam magiging prophetic siya, was in Luke 8. I was doing my devotion and I was in Luke 8. And as I was reading through it, Bigla ko napa-stop. Because I was trying to understand what the Lord was trying to say. This was the story of the storm. Nung tulog si Lord. Tapos nagpanik yung mga disciples. Di ba? Dahil may malaking storm. Mga malalaking tao to, mga mangingis dato. Pero natakot sila. Ganun po kalakas yung bagyo. So, nung natatakot na sila, ano sabi nila? Malulunod na tayo. Malulunod na tayo. Gising mo na si bossing. Right? They woke Jesus up. Jesus, don't you care? If we all die, gising si Lord. Pagod na pagod si Lord ng ministry. For more than eight hours. Natulog. Ginising nila. Lord, ano ba? Mamamatay na tayo. Gising si Lord. Ewan ko kung hinawakan niya rin yung mukha niya. <laughs> ano sabi ni Lord? Peace. Be still. Peace is coming to start. The disciples were so amazed. <gasps> Truly is the Son of God. Right? Nice story, right? Just reading through it. And so I googled the picture. Because I wanted to meditate on what the story was about. And this picture came out. This is a famous painting of Luke chapter 8. I was just staring at the picture. And the Lord spoke to me. Not a new revelation, by the way. He just spoke to my heart and ministered to me. So I went back to the scripture. And I saw something there that was new to my eyes. It's not new, it's there. You see, 
when there was a storm, Jesus was sleeping. Natakot yung mga disciples, ginising. Ang nangyari ngayon, tumayo si Lord. Right? And every time this story is told, we're always given a picture of Jesus in front of the boat doing this. That's the picture we like. Ako, COVID-19, Lord, Lord, magpakita ka. COVID! Be gone! Right? Yan yung picture. Ayaw natin to. Tutulog si Lord. Right? We don't like this picture. Why? Why, why is God sleeping? Alam niyo ano ano nangyari? The Lord spoke. The Lord was saying, this is the picture true rest. Because of his power in the resurrection, this picture makes a lot of sense. Habang nagpapanik tayo, tulog si Lord. Nirebuke ni Lord nung ginising siya. Oh you of little faith, tulog ako. Hindi tayo malulunod. Andito ako. Hindi to ending. But we always want to wake Jesus up and tell Him what He needs to do when this is actually the picture that we need to accept. Matuwa ka kung tulog si Lord. Ibig sabihin, iniimbita ka rin niyang ano? Matulog. Bakit? Para mabus ang immune system. Totoo. Grabe, di ba? Walang makaanap ng cure. Ano sabi ng World Health Organization? Maghugas ng kamay. Matulog ng maaga. Magbus ng immune system. Ano sabi ni Lord sa Luke? Eh? Tulog kayo. <laughs> Rest in me. What are you doing? Why are you panicking? Binili mo na lahat ng tissue, alcohol, at mas. Tapos binibenta mo sa Lazada ng matas. <laughs> Yung mga gumawa niyan dito, guys, mag-repent kayo. Sa Green Hills, ramdam namin ito. Baka may mga nagtatanong na, natutulog ba ang Diyos? Sagot ko ngayon, oo. In fact, kagabi, masarap din tulog. Kahit may problema. Yun nga sabi ko, ano ang magagawa ko? Tao lang din. Kailangan din maghugas ng kamay. Kailangan din matulog. Kailangan mag-vitamin C. I know my human limitation, but I also know my God. And I'm not ashamed that it is Jesus who can heal. It is Jesus who can stop this virus. Sabi mo, religious, religious answer, well, ikaw may sagot? Wala naman sagot ang mundo. Tayo may sagot. And so Paul says, I am under obligation. Obligado ko, both to the Jews and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. So for my part, I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. Paul says, Obligado Alam niyo ba lahat po tayo dito? If you're a Christian, you're obligated to preach the gospel, especially at times like this. Hindi ikaw yung taga-share ng fake news or yung mga lahat nakakatakot na. Oh, ito yung statistics ngayon. Di ba? Sabi nila ganyan. Carrier ka ba ng virus o ng gospel? Are you a carrier of the fear? Or your carrier of hope, of love.
Kaya minsan nahiya tayo kasi hindi natin kilala si Lord. Hindi tayo ganun kay Lord. Kaya hirap ka. Fear-based ang buhay. Laging takot. Laging praning. Ako na ang susunod. Makatiilong ko. Meron na to. Meron na. Rather than knowing God, you're sovereign. You're powerful. My life is in your hands. Obligation. May utang ako kay Lord. Utang na loob ko kay Lord. That I have to preach the gospel. To share the gospel. To everyone. Even those in Rome. Importante po itong linya na to. Pati doon sa Roma. Paul has never been in Rome. But his goal was to go there and preach to the Romans. Alam niyo naman yung mga Romans, yun yung kaaway ni Lord. Yan po yung nagkulong sa kanya. Gustong gusto niya nung nakulong siya. Bakit? Makakapreach ako sa mga Romans. Habang nakakulong, nagpe-preach. So that the guards can hear. I am under obligation. He claims to be in debt with the people as never he was never able to see. How does this work? And then he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and then to the Greek. He was saying, I need to preach this. Bakit? Ito lang ang magbabago sa buhay mo. Walang iba. As Christians, what a joy that we are entrusted with the gospel. Biro mo tayo yun? Lalo na sa mga ganitong sitwasyon, sabi ni Lord, game face on. Now's the time. You've been waiting for an opening. You've been waiting for a conversation. Ito na yung pinagdadasal nyo. Lord, gamitin mo ako. Lord, gamitin mo. Ito na yun. Lord, habang lahat takot, sana mamuhay kami na may pananampalataya at matanong sa amin, bakit ka ganun? May iba sa inyo. Hindi kayo weird, pero iba lang. story that we share and we tell the people is important. When the world says that the power to change is Caesar and the government, yan kasi yung ano nila eh, Caesar is Lord nung time ng New Testament. Bakit? Si, si, da, under Caesar, wala pong war. Nagkaroon ng Pax Romana. Walang gera. Gumandang ekonomiya. Yung prinamis ni Caesar, changes coming actually happen. Sabi ni Caesar, I hate drugs na wala drugs. But, only for a moment. Until another person came to rule. When the world says, trust a political figure, trust a political party, Jesus says, trust me. Because I have the power to save. When the world says, to transform is by one's self. Maniwala ka lang. Kaya mo. Tama po ba? Power! If you believe, you will achieve. 10,000 po yung mga ganong seminar. Basta yung energy dito sa bilbil mo can transform the universe to align to whatever you like called the law of attraction. God says, Peter, uh, Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God to save. Kinulong na yung author ng law of attraction. Naniniwala pa rin po ang mga tao. Bestseller pa rin siya. 
puno pa rin ng seminar. At wala namang nagbago. When the world says the seminar will change you, the Christian says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to save. When the world says, Positive, positivity lang yan. Paul would say, no, no, no. I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to save. No human being has the power to change hearts. Only God does. You know when I learned this? Alam mo, kailangan ko ito nalaman. Nung nagdadalaga ng mga anak ko. Ni akong tatay. Kahit anong sabi ko, I cannot change their hearts. Nung bata, kala mo kaya. He stopped. Why? Tapos naalala ko nung nagbinata ako, o nga no, kahit takot ako kay papa at kay mama, di nila ako makontrol. Why? They have no power. I needed an encounter with God. Only God can change our hearts. For in the righteousness of God is revealed, from faith to faith, as it is written, but the righteous man shall live by faith. Alam nyo, sobra pong punong puno, verse 1 to 17, wala po akong oras para tapusin. Actually, overtime na ako. Okay pa ba kayo? Two hours? Pakisabi power? Hindi, <laughs> okay. I'm gonna end with this. I'm gonna end with the challenge. And with the homework, for all of us. If you are a follower of Jesus, check. Kamusta ang paniniwala mo sa relasyon mo kay Lord? Do you really, truly believe to be able to say, I am a bond servant of Christ, surrendered without any right? No longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Because until you're able to say that, you can never say, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I need to be a bond servant. Masakit na proseso po yun. Igogoso po natin yan. Tawag po dyan sanctification in the following weeks. Introduction pa lang to ng sulat ni Paul sa atin. So, kung di mo masyado magets yung preaching ngayon, okay lang. Wala naman na ako next week. Right. <laughs> Bahala na si Owi. Alright? No, what I'm saying is, patikim pa lang to kung anong nasa sulat ni Paul sa Romans. Bakit? Ang lalim, pwede ka mag-swimming. Ang daming punto, ang daming angulo. Pero yung pinakapuso niya sa introduction to explain was this. Huwag tayong mahiya na sabihin ng Panginoon ng talaga. Not ashamed of the gospel, for this is power that saves you, saves me. Nobody else can do that. The only power that can actually stop the virus, the only power that can transform your marriage, your family, your attitude, your business, your path, only God, nobody else. Let's bow down our heads and let's pray. Lord Jesus, we we come to you tonight surrender. Lord, we acknowledge that nine out of ten things in our lives are actually not in our hands. It's out of our control. The economy is not in our hands. Our life tomorrow is not in our hands. The virus is out of our control. But you are in control. And you told us through your word, through the introduction of the book of Romans, 
that we are bond servants of Jesus Christ. Separated, set apart to do the will of God. A follower of Jesus. Not afraid to live a dangerous life. Called to be salt and light. Called to bring about life, love, and hope because of the power of the cross and the power of the empty grave, the resurrection of Jesus. So I pray today, God, that we would move in faith. Lord, na yung gospel, hindi lang namin ma-explain, but the gospel can be seen in our lives through how we're going to conduct ourselves in the next few months as we face a crisis in our nation. Let the church arise. Let every follower of Jesus come not only to a saving knowledge, but to an experience and an encounter that would bring about the power and the presence of God to our communities. I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to save lives. Today we surrender to our King. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen, amen. Let's give God a big hand.